Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we get started, I want to encourage you, if you've not already, to pick up your copy of Tales of the Dim Night. It's the first of my series of superhero comedy novels. If you enjoyed the 1960s Batman TV series or you like the tech, I think this is a book for you. You can pick that up along with all of my other superhero comedy novels at uh, store.greatdetectives.net where you can find all my books, audiobooks, and ebooks. All right, well, now it's time for today's episode of Boston Blackie. The original air date on this one is July the 23rd, 1947, and this one is Boston Blackie in Wax. Blackie. Tell him I'll be out as soon as I'm finished dressing. Sure will, Mary. I hope it is your friend, Blackie. I'm dying to meet him. <laughs> a lot of people have to die before he shows up. Coming. Miss Mary Wesley? No, I'm not Miss Wesley, but this is her apartment. Good heavens, you're not Boston Blackie, are you? Who, me? <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm Herman of Herman's Trucking Service. Got a little parcel here for Miss Mary Wesley. Can I bring it in? I suppose so. All right, you better step back, lady. Carter, Harry, and me. Well, that doesn't look like a little parcel to me. It's as big as a coffin. <laughs> Herman's Truck and Service holds everything, lady. Coffins to coffee cups is our slogan. Uh, uh, can I leave it right here? I don't know where else you'd leave it. Oh, Mary. Yeah. Mary, there's a big box out here for you. What are you expecting? Mm, nothing that I know of, Hazel. I'll be right out, though. Oh, she don't have to hurry, lady. Herman's Truck and Service don't rush his clients. You can sign for it. Oh, all right. There you are. Thanks, lady. Guess I'll take my rollers. You don't want them. No. Well, so long, lady. Remember the name, lady. Anytime you want anything hauled, just call for Herman of Herman's Truck and Service. Mary! Mary, come and look at this thing. It's as big as a... Oh, I see it, Hazel. Ooh, how lovely you look. <laughs> Pretty dress, isn't it? Hope mm -hmm. Blackie likes it. So what in the world is in this box? Well, I hope it's not what it looks like. <laughs> does look like a coffin, doesn't it? Handles and all. I wonder what it actually is. I wonder how we uh, open it to find out. Here's something that looks like a latch. It is a latch. Huh? I think this thing will open now. Something needs oiling. You know, I think... Oh, no. Mary. No. Mary, what's no, the matter? No, no. Hazel, is a body in there. A dead body. And it's... Oh, no. Boston Blackie. And now on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. If he's still alive. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Wait a minute. Yes? You are Boston Blackie, aren't you? But, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, you like it, don't you? My name, the weather, or your remaining anonymous? I mean it. You liked it, <laughs> didn't you? What's it? It is what I sent Miss Mary Wesley this morning. I'm Percy Wayne of the Wayne Wax Museum. Uh, may I come in? Well, that's the first question you've asked that I can answer. Sure, come in. Uh, thank you. Now, what's this it I'm supposed to have liked? The wax figure of you in the coffin I sent to Miss Wesley. The what of what? <laughs> she must have thought it was really you in that coffin, too. But you, you must be slightly out of your mind. If you have a mind to be out of... Oh, oh, please, don't phone the police. I can explain everything. Well... I'm not calling the police. I'm calling Mary Wesley. I must have frightened her to death. <laughs> yes, I imagine I did. What's the idea? 
Well, it's really very easy to explain. I sent a likeness of you in that coffin to Miss Wesley to show you how good a wax sculptor I am. Why didn't you just let me take your word for it? Oh, but you didn't know me. I, I want to show you and Inspector Faraday in my wax museum, closing your latest case. Why doesn't she answer? Well, perhaps she's gone for the police. They're figuring that coffin look awfully real. <laughs> Hello? Mary, this is Blackie. Oh, Blackie. It's all right, Mary. I'm not dead. Oh, that was a Blackie. wax image of me in that coffin. Oh, Blackie, I know, but... Well, at first I was sure it was you. Now, what does it mean, Blackie? What well, I'll you... tell you what it means when I see you. In the meantime, relax, and a man will come and get that monstrosity out of there. Goodbye. Bye. Wayne, you heard what I said to Miss Wesley. Now, get that coffin out of her apartment. <laughs> she thought it was really you, didn't she? Yes, she did. It's a fine joke. Now, go get that thing out of her apartment and fast. Well, right away, Blackie, but... May I use you in my museum? I'm just opening it, and I want to show all the famous local crime breakers and police and criminals. Sure, sure, I don't care. Just get out of here and get that wax morgue piece out of Mary's apartment. Oh, oh right away, Blackie, right away. And, and thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, now what? Never a dull moment at the club, Blackie. I better answer that. Some people have some sense of humor. Hello? Blanky, this is Faraday. What are you so proud of? That you remember your name? Now, don't work on me, Blanky. This is no social call. A wax figure of me was delivered to my office a little while ago with a note on it telling me to contact you about it. Now, what's the idea, Blanky? It isn't my idea, pal. A man named Percy Wayne wants to include you among the famous figures in his wax museum. Oh, he does, huh? Famous figures, huh? And they want me? Sure, they're going to display you as a dummy. Very consistent, I'd say. So that's what it is. Well, if you see your friend Wayne, tell him I'll let him know i got other things to worry about. Sure, you've got your job, for one thing. How do you manage to hold it, Inspector? Yeah, I don't know how I managed to hold off clipping you. <laughs> I would if I didn't have something on my mind. <laughs> Blanky, did you ever hear of Duke Allen? Duke Allen? Who's he? He's a big-time operator from the Middle West who nobody's ever seen. The word is whom, Faraday? Uh, who, whom, who cares? Nobody's ever seen him. But I've got to find out what he looks like before he causes trouble. What trouble is he going to cause? I got an underworld tip. He's coming here to cut in on those gangster Mosley brothers. Well, go to the Mosley brothers and tell them to tip you off when Alan comes to see them. It's just as simple as that. The Mosley brothers are hiding out, dope. They know I'm looking for them. I, mean, I got an idea this Duke Allen will find them before I do. Anybody could find anything before you knew it was even missing. Uh, so nobody's even seen this Duke Allen, huh? Nobody in this city. He's never been arrested, so there are no files on him. No files on him, huh? That's right. Well, pal, I'm going to find them for you to prove there are no flies on me. You'll kick through with that thousand dollars, Mrs. Brighton. You're going to be an awfully sorry lady. But I don't have a thousand dollars, Mr. Mosley. Well, then get it and get it fast. I'll be around to your store at noon tomorrow. We want you to have it. That's all. My brother will take you to the door. Bob, sure, Lenny. Oh, Mr. Mosley, can't you give me more time? Lenny I'm a said poor we'll woman. See you at noon tomorrow, lady. So long. But you've got to give me time. I have to have time. <laughs> well, one more customer we got. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've done good, even though we are hiding from Faraday and his cops. Right. <laughs> but uh, I figure we can do a lot better, Bob. Figuring, figuring, all the time figuring. What are you trying to do, Lenny? Figure yourself to death. I'm trying to figure out how we can let Duke Allen muscle in on us and still make a profit. Allen isn't going to muscle in on us, Lenny. You know, we're doing pretty good. Only in town a month, and the cops are looking for us, and so is this Duke Allen. wonder what he's going to show. Well, our information didn't say. Yeah, I know. Didn't say what he looked like. Only that he was coming to town to cut in. <laughs> Allen's funny that way. Nobody knows what he looks like. Yeah. But uh, I've been asking around. We'll find out soon. You've been asking around, asking around, all the time asking around. Asking gets answers. Allen hasn't shown yet, so we're still in business. Uh, Bob, huh? we got to find out what he looks like and get to him before he gets to us. How are we going to find out what he looks like? Well, I'm going to start figuring on that right now. Figuring, figuring, all the time figuring. Figuring's going to be the death of you. If I don't figure a way to find Duke Allen, he's going to be the death of us. <laughs> Well, 
Wayne Wax Museum. Percy Wayne speaking. Uh, uh, Mr. Wayne, this is Boston Blackie. Oh, hello, Blackie. I have the figures of you and Inspector Faraday on display already. Are you coming down to see yourself? Uh, not right away. Oh. Uh, look, Wayne, do you have a wax figure of Duke Allen in your museum? Duke Allen? Yes, I do. Is it the Duke Allen, I mean? Well, yes. Uh, no one's supposed to know what he looks like. Well, I do, though. I met him in Kansas City once and even shook hands with him. <laughs> Brave of me, wasn't it? Well, Allen hasn't killed everyone he's met. Is the figure of Alan on display? Oh, yes. It's one of my favorites. You ought to come down to see it. It's my best effort. Well, I am not interested in seeing it right now. Oh, dear. I thought I'd have a visitor. I've been open all day, and I haven't had one customer. Well, I'm going to run an ad in the newspapers for you, saying you're displaying a figure of Duke Allen. And believe me, you'll have customers, at least two paying customers, dropping in for a payoff. <laughs> That ad in the paper said they have dummies of Dillinger and Babyface Nelson at this museum, too. Yeah. Let's look at them first, Lenny. All we're interested in is finding out what Duke Allen looks like. Now, quit wandering around, Bob, and do some serious looking. We haven't much time. Hurry and hurry and all the time hurrying. I'm trying to get somewhere fast. Uh, hey, here's Duke Allen. Yeah. Yeah, see? That's what the sign says. I can read. Now, quick, take a picture of the dummy. I don't want to have to spot this guy from memory and don't let anybody see you. Don't worry, I got my camera under my hat. Go ahead then, make it fast. It's all set to go. That a boy. Yeah, we got Alan's picture. Now what? Now we develop the picture, find him and knock him off before he gets to us. Knock him off, huh? <laughs> a pleasure, Lenny. Yeah, but it's going to be all mine. Okay. Now come on, let's get out of here, get that picture developed. How long do you think it'll take us to find him? Not long. Carry his picture around. Well, Blackie... Wait a minute, Mary. Stay in hiding. They may come back for something. Well, what, Blackie? I didn't see them leave anything. How do you know you were behind this curtain? Well, yes. Hey, except when I peeked. Oh, come on out. Okay. <laughs> there we are. Those were the Mosley brothers. Faraday showed me the pictures. And now we know that they'll be gunning for Alan. Well, I want to look at this dummy of Duke Allen. I want to see what he looks like, too. He looks slightly waxy. How much I can tell you. The wax figure of you, Blackie. Why, it's the same. Blackie! What's the matter, Mary? What's the matter? Well, look at the sign in front of the figure of you. It doesn't say Boston Blackie, it says Duke Allen. The Mosleys took your picture. And if they ever see you, they'll shoot to kill. <laughs> And now back to Boston Blackie. Percy Wayne makes an absolutely perfect wax image of Boston Blackie and displays it in his wax museum. Also in the museum are the figures of other famous crime fighters and detectives and scores of famous criminals of the past and present. Duke Allen, Midwest racketeer, is coming to town to take over from the Mosley brothers, local racket bosses. No one knows what Allen looks like. That is, no one but Percy Wayne, who has a wax figure of him in his museum. The Mosley brothers learn this, come to the museum, take a photograph of a figure marked Duke Allen, and then set out to find and kill him. What they don't know, however, is that the figure marked Duke Allen is actually that of Boston Blackie. As we return to our story, the Mosley brothers are in their hideout as the telephone rings. Hello. Hello, is this one of the Mosley brothers? Who wants to know? I do. This is Duke Allen. Uh, Duke Allen? Surprised I found you. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this, Lenny or Bob? Is it Lenny? Hiya, Lenny. Hiya. I'm coming up to see you with Bob. How'd you know where to find us? I got ways of finding out a lot of things. I found out you and Bob are doing so good, I think I ought to cut in. Or maybe take over. Bob and I aren't cutting anybody in. Maybe we might cut you up a little, but not in. That's kind of tough talk. Yeah, I know. I'll soften you and your brother up. I can find you. You can't find me. You don't know what I look like or even where I am. I think we don't know what you look like, huh? That's right. That's wrong. We know where you are, too. So you say. Well, just to prove it to you, 
Just to prove we're a little tougher to deal with than you think, I'll phone you back as soon as my brother comes in. You will, huh? You really think you know where I am? Where you are? What you look like? Only try to cut in on us, Duke, and I'll hate to tell you what you look like. <laughs> Don't you see why I switched those signs in the museum, Mary, so the Mosleys would come looking for me? It's very simple. You mean you're very simple, Blackie. Oh, Mary. Now, look, those men are out to kill Duke Allen, and now they're looking for you to kill you. I know they're looking for me, and I made it easy for them to follow me, too. In fact, one of the Mosley brothers was following us when we came into the building just oh, now. Oh, just fine. Any minute I expect a knock on the door. Uh, no, no, I, I don't think they'll try to knock me off here. At least I hope not. It'll spoil my plans. Spoil your plans? Oh, brother, what an understatement. It'll spoil you. Mary, this plan of mine will bring the Mosleys out of hiding and may bring Duke Allen out in the open, too. Then Faraday can grab all three. Excuse me a minute. Who are you calling? The police, I hope. No, just downstairs to have a little chat. Yes? Uh, Harry, don't forget, if anyone phones for Duke Allen, give me the call. No one's called for him so far, Blackie, but I'll ring you if anyone does. Thanks. I don't think the Mosley brothers will phone, Blackie. They'll just come up here They'll and... have to phone first, Mary. I know I was followed to this building, but they don't know which apartment I'm in. And besides, my theory is they'll invite me to meet them somewhere for a conference. Mm -hmm. And I can guess what kind of a conference, too. Hello, Blackie. Bang, bang. Goodbye, Blackie. <laughs> oh, I think they'll give me a little better break than that. Well, I wish you'd give yourself a break and ask for police protection. What? And be obligated to Faraday for the rest of my life? The rest of your life is going to be rest in peace. You don't forget this nonsense. It's too late to forget it now. And besides, it isn't nonsense. I want to get the Mosley brothers for Faraday. Oh, the things you do for Faraday. And the way you talk to each other when you meet. Oh, you think you were the worst enemies in the world. I don't get it. <laughs> you know how fond I am of that old guy. Well, oh, maybe this is that call I want. And the one I don't want. Shh. Hello? Let me speak to Duke Allen. Speaking. Hello, Duke. Hi. Hey, your voice sounds different. I got a surprise for you. <laughs> this is Lenny Mosley. Well, Lenny Mosley, you uh -oh. don't say. I did say I'd call you back, so I'm doing it. You surprised? Yeah, I yeah. am. Didn't think I knew where you were, did you? I guess you're a pretty smart guy. Yeah. I want to see you because I'm taking over, Lenny. All by myself, too. Maybe we can make a deal. I run things all by myself. That can be kind of lonesome, Duke. Now, look, I got a proposition to offer you where maybe we can all be happy, nobody will get hurt. Proposition, huh? Let's hear it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not over the phone, Duke. Meet us somewhere, huh? You mean the place? We don't want any ears in the wall. That's right. How about the storeroom and the old warehouse on Lions Road? That's easy to find. Okay, what time? Uh, eight tonight. We'll be waiting for I know. I'll be there. So long. Well, Mary, that does it. What funeral parlor do I phone? Do you have any preference? I prefer right now not to think about that, Mary. I'm going to call Faraday, and at 8 o'clock tonight, he and I are going to make the warehouse, the house where we grab the Mosley brothers. <laughs> Mosley brothers are here? You're nuts, Blackie. There's nobody in that warehouse. What do you say that, Faraday? Just because it's dark in there? You don't think they'd keep a light burning in the window for us, do you? I don't think they're in there. Or ever were. I know they are, Faraday. I made a date to meet them here. It's Duke Allen, of course. And so you've dragged me way out here to waste more of my time, of course. Quiet. We're getting too close to talk. An empty building can't hear anything. And an empty head can't understand anything, apparently, either. Uh, okay. Step back, step back, will you? I'm going to kick open the door. And be ready to duck a few bullets. Oh, nice targets in this moonlight, you know. Ready? Go ahead. Well, Blackie. Guess we'll have to go in and after them. Yeah, we got a better chance of going in after a million dollars. Ready with your gun, Faraday. These guys might not be hospitable. Okay. Faraday, this floor sounds like your shoes. Maybe behind that door there. I can see behind the door. It's nothing but wall. Hmm. There's no one here. That's funny. Ha ha. I'm hysterical. Genius, aren't you, Blackie? 
Kind of a semi-pro genius right now. Where will I put this light on? Turn it off. I can see you and I'd rather not. Faraday, that light bulb was warm when I touched it. Now he's taking the temperature of electric lights. Come on, stupid. Let's get out of this joint. Wait a minute. Huh? The Mosley's kept their date here. I'm sure of it. I wonder what made them leave. Who cares? I wonder what I'm doing here in a warehouse with a bunch of old newspapers and a young idiot. I'm just looking at one of those newspapers. Take a peek at the one on top here. It's from last July. Huh? Our pictures are on the front page in that Jeff Martin case. Yeah, don't remind me of it. I still say my idea... Faraday, was... right. I've got it. The Mosleys were here, but they left when they saw this picture of me in the paper. They knew then that I'd tricked them into thinking that I was Duke Allen, so they scrammed. Hey, that's right. And I know right where the Mosleys went from here, too, to the museum. They still have to get a picture of Duke. Come on, Faraday. If they want to take a picture, grabbing them ought to be a snap. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you think they have statues of us in the museum by now? Oh, how should I know, Bob? Well, let's go in and see. I feel neglected. You got everybody else to... All I know is Boston Blackie tricked us. We got to get Duke Allen's picture and scram out of that museum as fast as we can. Hurry and hurry and all the time, hurry and... Oh, come on, let's go in and... Like what? me to go in with you, boys? Huh? Who are you? Maybe the guy wasn't talking to us, Lenny. Oh, yes, I was, Bob. Allow me to introduce myself, boys, in person this time. I'm Duke Allen. Huh? Duke? Surprised? Yeah. Come on, walk down the alley with me so we can talk. Yeah, yeah, sure. What are you doing here, Duke? Gonna look in the museum to see if you can find statues of us? I don't need any wax dummies to tell me what you boys look like. All I needed was a few connections, not suppose... Hey, Lenny, he's got a gun! That's got a knife in his neck. Lenny, he always fast. Yeah, and it was a pleasure, too. But quick, let's pick him up, dump him in the back of our car before somebody comes along. Okay, that's it. Yeah. I got his legs. What are we going to do when we get him in the car, Lenny? I don't know. You're not just figuring. You're in figuring. All the time figuring. Now, hold him with one hand. Open the car door. Okay. Good. Now, one, two, three, and in. That's it. All right, quick, close that door. Somebody's coming down the street. Okay. Nobody can see him in there. What are we going to do? Leave him there and scram? No, we'll drive him around town for a few hours till the museum closes. Then I'll figure out how to get rid of the body and Boston Blackie, too. Come on, Faraday. No. We'll never catch the Mosley brothers waiting for a flash about them on your teletype. Let's try my plan. We tried it. We waited in the museum for an hour, didn't we? Wait a minute, there's something coming in again. Something to what? Oh, nothing to do with this case. There never will be anything about the Mosleys or Allen. But, Faraday, if you'll just come yeah, with I know me, what I'll... you'll do. Waste more of my time. No, Faraday, this time I'm positive the Mosleys will show up. And we ought to be there when they do for a showdown. <laughs> yeah, this museum's sure a spooky place in the dark, Lenny. These figures look like ghosts. Yeah, you're just self-conscious, Bob. The only ghost material in here is that body you're dragging. Uh, now, bring it down this way. I uh, found a dummy mark, Duke Allen, and it's a real one this time. Okay. Be glad to get rid of this. The dead guy's heavy. Well, a wax dummy isn't. A wax dummy's a lot easier to get rid of than a dead body. The body will be found here, though, Lenny. Not for a while. People think it's a pretty lifelike dummy at Duke Allen for a day or two, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cute trick, I think. <laughs> Would have been plenty cute trying to bring him in here when the place was open. And it wasn't cute driving a dead body around town waiting for this joint to close. You shouldn't have killed him as soon as you did, Lenny. Well, it was him or us, Bob. I lay him on the floor and I'll get that wax dummy of his out of the way. Okay. Well, come on, come on. Hey. Huh? Look behind us, Lenny. Isn't that something? In what something? The the figures behind us. The, the sign says Inspector Faraday and Boston Blackie. Each one with a gun in his hand. Look real almost. They're yeah, too real. They give me the creeps. I, I'm starting to worry. Worrying, worrying. All the time worrying. That's just... Hey, Lenny. Yeah? Those wax dummies behind us just moved. Oh, you're crazy. He's not crazy, Mosley, and you're not either. You're out! Oh, 
I told you they'd come here tonight, Friday. Yeah, well, it took them long enough to show up. I was standing still so long, I was beginning to think I was a wax dummy. There are no cracks. <laughs> no, Friday, no cracks. You couldn't be a wax dummy. No, of course not. Of course not is right. A wax dummy looks lifelike. <laughs> This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Uh, you have to wonder what the artist was thinking sending that statue to Mary Wesley. She would uh, like it. And I mean, someone even thinking that Mary would have called the police on that uh, already was that would have been really silly because we know from this series that Mary Wesley is a nurse. And after she gets over the initial shock, she should be able to tell the difference between a wax dummy and a dead body. Certainly, she'd check and make sure Blackie was dead and then find out he was wax. So this was an interesting use of the wax figures. Certainly, the wax museum thing is a pretty common trope, but a lot of those mysteries really play out a lot the same. Uh, just because Blackie kind of varies a bit from the formula, they were able to play around with it and really just use them in some pretty creative ways. So I enjoyed this episode. All right, well, listener comments and feedback. And uh, we have a couple of comments regarding episode 2550, The Harmonica Man Murder. And a uh, comment from Marky says, Hey, Adam, maybe somebody else pointed this out, but I think the reason the jilted boyfriend went to the ex-fiance was to get him in trouble so that the girl would have neither of them. 
What I thought was more of concern is why did Blackie go to the fiancé and tell him, I know what you did and I'm going to tell. That's one pet peeve I have with some of these old mysteries. People confront the bad guy by themselves. Hello, you figured out they're really bad, maybe a murderer. It might be a good idea to go to the police or at least have a friend along. Well, that is a good point, Marky. I do think that part of the way a lot of these radio programs work uh, particularly when you have a show like Nick Carter or Boston Blackie, is that the detective thinks, you know, he can do this because he is this great he-man and ultimately nothing is going to hurt him and he is going to handle the situation. They pull a gun, he'll find a way out of it. And you can get away with that mainly when you're the main character of the story. Because, yeah, of course, the, you know, Boston Blackie's going to uh, be back next week. I did like the announcer's little play. Like, uh, now Dick Colmer is Boston Blackie if he's still alive. I mean, yeah, who are you kidding? That was cute, though, the way they did that in this episode. But thanks so much for the comment, Marky. Yeah, that's a fair point. And Michael says, Har Monica playing is not justifiable homicide. I will say that's a no, but I'm a little bit biased, I think, because my grandfather was a harmonica player. Thanks so much for the question, Michael. That will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. And next Thursday, we'll be back with another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.